Before we get started, I would like to give some trigger warnings. Some of these books include accidental death, eating disorders, and sex work. Hello, my name is Charlie, and this is September's Reading Recap. This video will contain many spoilers to all of the books, so I will list the books and if I recommend them in the comments below, as per usual, so you can make your own decision on if you would like to watch this. I did not read as much this month. It's pretty light and mostly mangas because I am working on another project, which will hopefully be here soon. So let's get started. First, I read Demon Slayer Volume 13. I gave this 3 out of 5 stars. I really don't have anything to say other than that I'm annoyed at how sexualized the character looks are becoming. One of the things that I loved about this series was that they didn't use sex to sell it, so I'm disappointed. Regardless, I do still recommend this full series. Next, I read Demon Slayer Volume 14, which I gave 4 out of 5. I feel like I blinked and this one was over. There's a female character that has a lot of hidden strength that I'm liking. Not much else to say here. Next is Demon Slayer Volume 15. I gave this one four and a half out of five stars. The sister is no longer dressed all scandalous, and I am so happy. I think that's fine in its own thing. I just don't like that the show had her all conserved and then suddenly decided to make her all sexual. I don't know. So I'm, I'm happy that that's over with. She can also be in the sun now and speak. No one's sure yet if she's becoming human again or if her demon powers are just evolving. Her new ability of being able to go into the sunlight has made her a target for other demons who want her power though. Next is Demon Slayer Volume 16. I gave this one 5 out of 5 stars. Here Shinobu avenges her sister's death. Next is Demon Slayer Volume 17. I only gave this 1 out of 5 stars. I honestly don't remember anything in this other than the killing of an animal. I'd only recommend this because it's part of the full series, but as a standalone, I definitely would not. Next is Demon Slayer Volume 18. I gave this one 5 out of 5. I really don't want to spoil anything with this one, but this is one of my favorite volumes by far. Next is Demon Slayer Volume 19. I gave this one 4.5 out of 5 stars. This one ended so abruptly, but it's still good. I'm not going to try to explain the plot and butcher it, so just read the series. It's great. Trust me. Next is Demon Slayer Volume 20. I gave this one 4.5 out of 5 stars. The main characters are barely around anymore. This is great as a separate story, but I'm so confused why the beginning and ends of mangas and animes never feel like they come from the same story at all. Next, I read Heartstopper Volume 1 by Alice Osman. Gave this 5 out of 5 stars. This is just the cutest damn thing ever. Nick and Charlie go to an all-boys school. They sit next to each other in a class and start becoming friends. Charlie is gay, and as far as anyone knows, Nick isn't. Until now, that is. The way that their chemistry is written is just so powerful. I got butterflies reading this and had a smile on my face from start to finish. I absolutely adore this series and definitely recommend it. Next, I read Heartstopper Volume 2 by Alice Osman. Also gave this one 5 out of 5 stars, and it gets a crying emoji because it really touched me. In this volume, Charlie and Nick are getting closer. They're hanging out with each other's friends. They're kissing a lot more. They go on an official date. Nick comes out to some of his friends and to his mom, and it's all just too cute. I definitely recommend. Next is Heartstopper Volume 3 by Alice Osman. I also gave this one 5 out of 5 stars. There's a class trip to Paris where Nick comes out to more people and they start telling people that they're officially a couple. The teachers get together too and Tao and Elle get together. Love is in the air and it's all so wonderful. I definitely recommend. Next is Heartstopper Volume 4 by Alice Osman. I gave this one 4.5 out of 5 stars. I don't love the way Elle is always telling Tao not to eat. Like, Charlie's over here struggling with anorexia, and Nick is being incredibly respectful and supportive in getting him help. But then Elle's just like, don't eat Tao, no snacks for you, and it's just never even explained why she's trying to control him. It's so confusing and it makes me uncomfortable, but I love Nick, he's doing everything right, and I just love him so much for it. I'm excited to see what comes next and I definitely recommend the series. Next is 1984 by George Orwell. I gave this one 0.5 out of 5 stars. I don't know why but I seem to hate most classic literature and that makes me sad. I really want to like it but I just can't jump on that bandwagon I guess. This one is full of politics and prostitution. I just hate it so much. I don't understand the appeal at all but to each their own I guess. I wouldn't recommend this though. 
Next, I read The Life of a Wannabe Mogul, Mental Disarray by Bella Thorne. I gave this one 1.5 out of 5 stars. I really wanted to like this. I enjoy some of her interviews and thought she'd have interesting things to say, but this is just a collection of half thoughts from when you're high as fuck, and I did not enjoy it. It's also extremely difficult to read because nearly every word is spelled wrong. She even includes a quote by Marilyn Manson at the end saying, I just became illiterate after reading this. A lot of the other celebrities celebrity quotes at the end of this, even admit to not reading the book. I don't understand why she included that. She probably made several millions off of this though, so good for her I guess. But I wish she'd put a little bit more effort into things sometimes. Overall, I can't recommend this. And lastly, I listened to Through the Storm, A Real Story of Fame and Family in a Tabloid World by Lynn Spears. I gave this 0 out of 5 stars. The book gets 0 out of 5, but I listened to it read to me by That Surprise Witness here on YouTube, and with her commentary, I was definitely entertained. It's hard for me to have any kind of respect for anyone in Britney's family, though. It's gross how they're all feeding off of her, even with this book. No one would even know who Lynn was without Britney, and she's writing a book about fame. Like, just go away. It's gross. She also just casually mentions that she killed a child while driving, but says she's grateful that her own kid is still alive. Way to rub that in the face of the parents of the kid that you killed. The whole book was written without taste. I do not recommend. Unless you watch BJ's videos reading it to you, then sure, because she's entertaining, and I totally support her. So that's everything for September. October is probably going to be a light month as well, because I have a lot of other projects that I'm working on. Until next time. Bye.